From beloved game show hosts to rock and roll royalty to children's TV legends, some true giants have passed away in 2023. Here's a look at who we've lost. Fiddler on the Roof wasn't the likeliest candidate to be a smash hit musical. Based on Shola Malekum's beloved tale of Jewish life in the Pale of Settlement, the musical tells the story of a milkman named Tevye, who struggles to maintain his traditions, accept his daughter's potential husband, and navigate a hostile world. Israeli actor Haim Topol, or just Topol, as he was usually billed, was a big part of the musical's success and would forever be linked to the role of Tevye. Topol portrayed Tevye in thousands of stage performances of Fiddler on the Roof, playing the part in the original 1967 West End production, revivals in 1983 and 1994, and a Broadway revival in 1990. Most prominently, he starred in the hit 1971 film adaptation, which landed him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Topol also portrayed Dr. Hans Zarkov in the 1980 movie version of Flash Gordon, and Smuggler Columbo in the James Bond movie For Your Eyes Only. Topol, who had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, died in Tel Aviv, Israel, on March 8, 2023. He was 87. There were three unique and distinct phases in the life and career of Robert Blake, who started appearing in films in the late 1930s at the age of six. Between 1939 and 1944, Bobby Blake portrayed Mickey in more than three dozen Our Gang or Little Rascals theatrical shorts. That gave way to numerous appearances as Little Beaver in Red Rider movie serials, and appearances on TV westerns in the 1950s and 60s. After playing convicted killer Perry Smith in 1967's In Cold Blood, Blake starred as detective Tony Beretta on the TV crime drama Beretta from 1975 to 1978, which won him an Emmy Award. In the 80s and 90s, Blake assumed a lot of tough guy roles, retiring after a memorably creepy appearance in David Lynch's Lost Highway in 1997. Blake would make headlines when he was arrested and tried for the 2001 murder of his wife, Bonnie Lee Bakley. The salacious trial ended in an acquittal, but Blake was held liable in a civil wrongful death suit and had to pay his deceased wife's family $30 million. The Associated Press reported that Blake died at his Los Angeles home from heart disease on March 9, 2023. He was 89. Lance Reddick brought an irresistible energy to a series of high-profile and cult projects over the years. His intensity and deep character work often made them unforgettable. Reddick broke out on the HBO prison drama Oz, where he played undercover narcotics officer Johnny Basil. He then starred in The Wire as police lieutenant Cedric Daniels. Reddick once again played a complex authority figure, federal agent Philip Broyles, head of the titular paranormal office on Fringe. Many more TV roles followed for Reddick, including Deputy Chief Irving on Bosch, Albert Wesker on Netflix's Resident Evil series, and deeply evil boss Christian DeVille on Comedy Central's Corpora. Film fans know him best as Sharon, a concierge turned sidekick of the John Wick movies. Sharon, would you help set the mood for our new guests? Of course, sir. Gamers will remember him for years to come as Commander Zavala of the Destiny video game series. Reddick was discovered dead of natural causes in his home outside Los Angeles on the morning of March 17, 2023. He was 60 years old. Michael Lerner was a character actor, but he retreated into the scenery. A dominant and commanding force in most every role he took, Lerner was a quintessential supporting actor who specialized in portraying adversarial authority figures and bullying blowhards. After starting out in San Francisco theater in the 1960s, Lerner took on many dues playing roles on 70s and 80s TV shows, including Hill Street Blues and The Rockford Files, and in movies such as Eight Men Out and Harlem Nights. Probably his best-known role was as the tyrannical movie studio boss Jack Lipnick in Barton Fink. That part in the 1992 Coen Brothers cult classic earned Lerner an Academy Award nomination. Lerner worked often through the 90s, co-starring in Newsies, Blank Check, and in 1998's Godzilla, as the ineffectual mayor of a besieged New York City. Later gigs included that of a nasty children's book publisher in Elf, and an anti-mutant senator in X-Men Days of Future Past. Sam Lerner, Michael Lerner's nephew, broke the news of his uncle's death on Instagram on April 9, 2023. Michael Lerner was 81. A national treasure in his home of Australia, Barry Humphreys worked as a comedian, actor, and drag performer for decades. He's best known as his drag alter ego, Dame Edna Everidge, a saucy, purple-haired older woman from the upper crust who says whatever is on her mind, often speaking truth to power.
I counsel mm -hmm. and I heal. You counsel and you heal. I yes. do a little bit of healing. In addition to portraying Dame Edna's odious rival, Sir Les Patterson, Humphreys appeared as a signature character in hundreds of talk shows, TV series, and movies. For years, Dame Edna was a virtual regular on The Tonight Show and hosted the mock talk show Dame Edna's Hollywood on NBC in the early 1990s. Pixar fans will recognize Humphreys as a voice of Bruce the Shark from Finding Nemo. He also voiced the Great Goblin in Peter Jackson's The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. Humphreys was so beloved in Australia that his death was reported to the public by the country's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Humphreys was 89 years old. Born in Harlem to a family from the Caribbean, Harry Belafonte was America's biggest black multi-hyphenate superstar during the mid-20th century. In the 1950s, Belafonte was the biggest pop singer in the United States. He sang traditional and new songs in Caribbean-based styles, including his signature tune, Deo, the Banana Boat Song, and topped the Billboard album chart for 31 weeks. In the 1950s, the singer starred in the musical movie Carmen Jones, the romance Island and the Sun, and the post-apocalyptic The World, The Flesh, and The Devil. After a long break to focus on the civil rights movement, where he was a prominent and outspoken advocate for African-American equality and systemic change, working closely with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Belafonte returned to acting in the 1970s, appearing in Buck and the Preacher and Uptown Saturday Night. His final on-screen work was a supporting role in 2018's Black Klansman. Belafonte died of congestive heart failure at his home in New York on April 25, 2023, at 96 years old. The NFL became nationally popular in the 1960s thanks to television and explosive stars like running back Jim Brown. In his nine-year career, Brown was named to nine Pro Bowl squads, never missed a game, and set the records for yards and touchdowns. After leading the Cleveland Browns to its last league championship and being named the NFL's most valuable player in 1965, Brown decided to apply his talents to acting. His first major film role was in the classic war movie The Dirty Dozen. He'd go on to star in many more action films. In the 80s and 90s, Brown did some episodic TV work, appearing on Chips, Knight Rider, and The A-Team, before poking fun at his career and tough guy persona in comedies like I'm Gonna Get You Sucker and Mars Attacks. Brown's personal life was full of controversy. He faced multiple assault charges. In 1968, for example, he allegedly threw a female partner from a balcony, and in 1999, he was arrested after taking a shovel to his wife's car and allegedly threatening to kill her. In both cases, the women withdrew their allegations. A family representative told the Associated Press that Brown died at his home in Los Angeles on May 18, 2023, age 87. After cutting his teeth with small roles on British television series in the 1990s, Northern Irish actor Ray Stevenson became a prolific go-to guy for producers all over the world, looking to bring gravity and intensity to their films and TV series. His first prominent gig came in the 2004 film King Arthur, as a self-sacrificing knight Dagonet. He followed that with a run on HBO's Rome as soldier Titus Pullo. Stevenson then snagged a starring role in Punisher Warzone, portraying the title Vigilante. In addition to supporting roles in The Three Musketeers, G.I. Joe Retaliation, and The Book of Eli, Stevenson also appeared in the first three MCU Thor films as Thor's pal Volstagg, as well as in Divergent as abnegation leader Marcus Eaton. Stevenson was heavily involved in the Star Wars universe, voicing Gar Saxon in multiple projects and playing Balin Skull in the Disney Plus Ahsoka series. Getting to, to wield the lightsaber is just the best feeling in the world. He also played the villainous Governor Scott Buxton in the Indian hit RRR and worked alongside martial arts star Scott Adkins in the Accident Man series. His publicist told Variety that the actor died in Italy on May 21, 2023. Stevenson was 58 years old. Born Anna Mae Bullock, Tina Turner would become an iconic musician and earn the nickname the Queen of Rock and Roll. Combining a raspy voice, passionate performance style, and frenetic dance moves, Turner propelled her duo with her then-husband, Ike Turner, into massive success in the 1960s and 1970s. In the 1980s, Turner returned to prominence as a solo act and struck it even bigger, ultimately selling 180 million albums and winning 12 Grammy Awards. Turner was so famous, recognizable, and charismatic that Hollywood eventually beckoned. Turner took on just four film roles, but all were memorable. She appeared as the acid queen in Tommy, made a cameo in Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, played the villainous anti-entity in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and appeared as the mayor in Last Action Hero. 
Turner's family released a statement to Rolling Stone on May 24, 2023, announcing the rock star's death at her home in Switzerland. Turner's passing came after a lengthy sickness. She was 83 years old. Starting out in acclaimed films in the 1970s, Treat Williams spent the 1980s and 1990s popping up in everything, from prestige movies to crowd-pleasers to made-for-television fare. Williams broke out with a major role as hippie leader Berger in the 1979 film adaptation of the musical Hair, then appeared in Steven Spielberg's 1941 and the harrowing police drama Prince of the City, which earned him a Golden Globe nomination. He'd never be off the screen for long, co-starring in crime sagas such as Once Upon a Time in America and Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Over the course of his prolific career, Williams racked up more than 100 acting credits. And these days, he's remembered by many for numerous Christmas projects for Hallmark and Netflix, as well as playing dads in Chicago Fire, White Collar, and Chesapeake Shores. What many consider Williams' signature role came in the WB's family drama Everwood, where he starred as kindly neurosurgeon and compassionate single father Dr. Andy Brown. Williams' agent Barry McPherson told The Hollywood Reporter that the actor was riding his motorcycle near his home, outside Dorset, Vermont, on June 12, 2023, when he was struck by a car. After an airlift to Albany Medical Center in New York for treatment of severe injuries, Williams was pronounced dead at age 71. Across a variety of film genres and high-end theatrical productions, Glenda Jackson was among the most acclaimed actors of both her generation and the mid-20th century. A member of the Royal Shakespeare Company in the 1960s, Jackson portrayed Ophelia in a notable Hamlet staging and originated the role of Charlotte Corday in the London production of the controversial play Marat Saad, receiving a Tony nomination when the work moved to Broadway. Jackson then moved into film with a lead role in 1970's Women in Love, winning her first of two Academy Awards for Best Actress. She won the other for the 1973 romantic comedy A Touch of Class. More Oscar noms arrived for Sunday Bloody Sunday and Hedda with more Tony notices for Strange Interlude and Macbeth. In 1992, Jackson sidelined her extremely distinguished acting career for politics, running for and winning a seat in the UK's House of Commons. She'd go on to serve as junior transport minister for Prime Minister Tony Blair. After retiring from public service in 2015, Jackson returned to acting, portraying the title role in a London-based King Lear and winning a Tony Award for Three Tall Women. According to a statement issued by Jackson's agent and friend Lionel Lana, the actor died at her home in London following a short period of illness. Jackson was 87. Julian Sands brought intensity and gravitas to more than 150 film and television roles dating back four decades. In the 1980s and 1990s, Sands made a big impression with major roles in acclaimed films, such as The Killing Fields, A Room with a View, and Impromptu, while also starring in scary fare like Gothic, The Warlock Movies, and Arachnophobia. You've been busy. Sands also segued into TV, voice acting on Biker Mice from Mars and Jackie Chan Adventures, before starring as Eulish on Banshee and recurring on Smallville as Superman's father, Jor-El. In early 2023, just after his 65th birthday, Sands went hiking near Mount Baldy in California's San Gabriel Mountains and didn't return, prompting his family to file a missing persons report. Snowstorms interrupted rescue efforts until spring. On June 24, the San Bernardino Sheriff's Office reported that hikers had found human remains in the area where Sands disappeared. Three days later, they were conclusively identified as those of the actor. Alan Arkin consistently appeared in films and TV series since the 1960s, specializing in playing gregarious, over-the-top, and self-deprecating figures. An early figure in the improv movement that would shape 20th century comedy, Arkin was among the first members of Chicago's Second City Theater. Part of the program's Broadway debut in 1961, Arkin would win a Tony Award in 1963 for Enter Laughing. Just four years after that, he'd receive an Emmy nomination for The Love Song of Barney Kempinski and an Oscar nomination for the Cold War farce The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. The Oscars would recognize Arkin a few more times, with nods for 1968's The Heart is a Lonely Hunter and 2012's Argo. He finally got a win for 2006's Little Miss Sunshine for the role of unhinged grandpa Edwin. In between those career bookends, Arkin starred in numerous and various well-received films, including Wait Until Dark, Catch-22, Last of the Red Hot Lovers, The In-Laws, Edward Scissorhands, and Gross Point Blank. According to a statement from Arkin's sons, the actor died on June 29th at his Carlsbad, California home at 89 years old. A definitive icon of the mid-20th century sexy French aesthetic that spread through pop culture, Jane Birkin was a singer, model, fashion figure, and actor from the 1960s onward. 
Born in London and coming of age during the city's swinging 60s, Birkin relocated to Paris where she found success as an actor and singer, particularly with her partner, French superstar Serge Gainsbourg, whom she connected with on the set of the movie Slogan. Their envelope-pushing, abundantly sensual 1969 single, Je Tiens Moi Non Plus, was banned in many places, but it launched a long musical career and made Birkin hugely famous. Birkin appeared in numerous edgy 1960s and 1970s movies, including Blow Up, Wonderwall, La Piscine, and Death on the Nile. In 1984, the same year Hermes introduced the highly coveted Birkin bag, which was inspired by the entertainer, Birkin starred in La Pirate, which earned her the first of three César Award nominations, followed by La Femme de Mavi and La Belle Noiseuse. Birkin performed well into her 70s. A stroke and broken shoulder led to multiple cancelled engagements in 2023. On July 16, 2023, she died at her Paris home at age 76. A major character actor, Lilia Goldoni had a knack for collaborating with major auteurs. Trained as a dancer with the Lester Horton dancers, Goldoni switched to acting in her late teens and studied with John Cassavetes. In 1958, Shadows, a largely improvised film about then-controversial issues like interracial relationships, he cast Goldoni as a black woman believed by others to be white. Shadows garnered Goldoni a BAFTA Award nomination for Most Promising Newcomer. Soon after, she appeared in The Italian Job, The Day of the Locust, and Philip Kaufman's 1978 remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Goldoni earned a second BAFTA nod for a supporting role in Martin Scorsetti's Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Goldoni died on July 22, 2022, at the Actors Fund home in Englewood, New Jersey. She was 86. In the 1970s, Paul Rubens helped turn the Los Angeles comedy collective The Groundlings into a workshop for top-level sketch comedians. He parlayed that into 1980's The Pee Wee Herman Show, a full-length production that sent up and darkly skewed old-fashioned kiddie TV shows, and he played the title role, a high-voiced, overly made-up, effervescent man-child. If I could fly, I'd be the luckiest boy in the world! The show was such a hit that HBO taped it and brought Pee Wee Mania national, leading to the 1985 feature film Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the 1988 sequel Big Top Pee Wee, and the live-action, Emmy-winning Saturday morning classic Pee Wee's Playhouse. In the 1980s, Rubens almost always appeared in public fully in character and costume as Pee Wee, even hosting Saturday Night Live in that guise. After Playhouse ended in 1990, Rubens retired Pee Wee and delved into primarily comedy character work, popping up briefly with memorable roles in film and TV. Rubens portrayed the Penguin's father in Batman Returns, a vampire lackey in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a monstrous blue blood on 30 Rock, and Spleen in Mystery Men. In 2016, he revived Pee-wee for the Netflix original Pee-wee's Big Holiday. On July 31, 2023, a message on Ruben's Instagram account revealed that the actor and comedian died the previous evening. With a post that read, in part, Paul bravely and privately fought cancer for years with his trademark tenacity and wit. Ruben's was 70. While Angus Cloud attended the same Oakland performing art school with his eventual Euphoria co-star Zendaya, he was working in a New York restaurant when presented with the opportunity to audition for the popular and influential HBO teen drama series. Cloud quickly became a pivotal member of the Euphoria ensemble cast in its first two seasons as an emotionally complex drug dealer Fesco, a supplier to Rue and love interest for Lexi. Additionally, Cloud made appearances in the films North Hollywood and The Line popped up in several music videos, and was set to co-star in an anthology film and a horror movie from the makers of Scream 6. On the morning of July 31, 2023, the Oakland Fire Department answered an emergency call, whereupon they discovered Cloud's body. Cloud's family released a statement noting the actor's history with mental health issues and how his passing followed the death of his father by mere days. It was later confirmed that the actor had died due to an accidental overdose. Cloud was 25 years old. A highly recognizable and prolific actor, Mark Margolis, brought a palpable and captivating intensity to his roles, which often called for intimidating, dangerous underworld figures. Margolis broke out as Alberto the Shadow in the 1983 crime classic Scarface. For five years in the late 1990s and early 2000s, Margolis portrayed organized crime lord Antonio Napa on HBO's bleak prison drama Oz. Around the same time, Margolis began a long collaboration with filmmaker Darren Aronofsky playing a math genius in Pi, and roles in several of the director's other films. But Margolis is best known for his portrayal of high-ranking drug-trafficking figure Hector Salamanca on Breaking Bad and its prequel, 
better call Sala. The character couldn't speak, requiring Margolis to do all his acting with his face and a bell. In 2012, the performance earned Margolis an Emmy Award nomination for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series. Following a brief period of sickness, Margolis died at New York City's Mount Sinai Hospital. The actor was 83. Johnny Hardwick rarely appeared in front of the camera, so he's likely not as recognizable for his face as he is for his voice. He portrayed ineffectual, oblivious, chain-smoking exterminator and conspiracy theorist Dale Gribble in the animated series King of the Hill for 13 years. How is cutting down on pollution a government plot, Dale? Open up your eyes, man. They're trying to control global warming. When the show was in pre-production, King of the Hill co-creator Greg Daniels attended a comedy showcase in Los Angeles. After hearing the Austin-based Hardwick tell some funny stories about his father, he hired the comic to be part of the writing staff for the Texas spoofing cartoon. Then Hardwick auditioned to play Dale and got the part. His first credited role on a filmography that includes numerous independent projects, he also remained on the writing staff of King of the Hill, part of the team that won a 1999 Emmy Award for Outstanding Animated Program. Summoned to Hardwick's Austin home on August 8th to perform a welfare check, police found the body of the actor and writer. Hardwick was 64. Arlene Sorkin was a consistent presence on network television for decades. In 1984, she started a 400-plus episode run on Days of Our Lives as Calliope Jones Bradford, a role that would garner her four soap opera Digest Awards and two Daytime Emmy Award nominations. Sorkin parlayed that into a supporting role on the 1987 sitcom Duet, one of the first ever Fox shows, and its spin-off, Open House. The actor also hosted the America's Funniest Home Video spin-off, America's Funniest People. In addition to winning a Peabody Award for her work producing the 2010 documentary Buto, Sorkin's grandest achievement is originating and defining the role of Harley Quinn in numerous animated DC Comics projects. Beginning with Batman the Animated Series in 1992, Sorkin voiced the character in 12 projects total across video, TV, and the internet. Sorkin's death was announced on August 26, 2023. She was 67. While not primarily an actor, Bob Barker was an entertainer, television star, and household name. While hosting The Bob Barker Show in 1950 Los Angeles, he was plucked to host a television version of the popular radio game show Truth or Consequences, a gig Barker held for 18 years. His follow-up project lasted even longer and made him a legend. In 1972, Barker hosted the first of more than 6,500 episodes of The Price is Right. He retired in 2007 collecting 19 Emmy Awards along the way. Thanks to The Price is Right, the many televised pageants he hosted, and his animal rights activism, Barker became famous for being Bob Barker. Help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. He even played fictionalized heightened versions of himself from time to time. Barker contributed cameos to Futurama, Yes Dear, How I Met Your Mother, The Nanny, and most famously, Happy Gilmore. In the 1996 comedy, he memorably and thoroughly pummels Adam Sandler's character on a golf course. Barker's publicist announced on August 26, 2023, that the game show host had died. Barker was 99. Initially a stage actor in his native South Korea, Byun Hebong moved into voice acting on television in the 1960s. He'd eventually become a prolific, often cast award-winning character actor on popular and notable Korean TV shows, including The First Republic and White Tower. However, Bian would find international recognition when he began a series of collaborations with acclaimed filmmaker Bong Joon-ho. He portrayed Sergeant Koo Hee Bong in 2003's Memories of Murder, and Park family patriarch Hee Bong in 2006's box office smash The Host. Bian was most likely best known for his role as the lead character's grandfather in Bong's Cannes Film Festival and Netflix hit fantasy Okja. On September 18, 2023, Bian died after experiencing medical issues related to a recurrence of diagnosed and treated pancreatic cancer. Bian was 81 years old. After landing breakthrough roles in 60s classics The Great Escape and The Greatest Story Ever Told, David McCallum enjoyed a long and illustrious career, bookended by playing major characters on two era-defining TV series about intelligence agents. In the James Bond-influenced 1964 spy series The Man From U.N.C.L.E., McCallum played elite secret agent Ilya Kuryakin, who, along with Robert Vaughn Solo, waged a weekly war around the world against the nefarious Thrush. McCallum would reprise the role in multiple TV projects, along with the big screen Uncle offshoots One Spy Too Many, One of Our Spies Is Missing, and The Karate Killers. Then in 2003, McCallum co starred on NCIS as Dr. Donald Ducky Mallard. 
a veteran criminal profiler and provider of low-key comic relief. McCallum died of natural causes in New York City on September 25, 2023. He was 90 years old. One of the most acclaimed and prolific actors of his generation, Michael Gambon began his long cinematic career in 1965, having a small role in Laurence Olivier's adaptation of Shakespeare's Othello. Gambon broke out internationally in the 80s with the 1985 romance Turtle Diary and the 1986 TV series The Singing Detective. That show won Gambon his first BAFTA TV award, a prize he also took home for Wives and Daughters, Longitude, and Perfect Strangers. In the US, Gambon was nominated for Emmys for his work in Path to War and 2009's Emma. Also a star of the British stage and winner of three Olivier Awards, Gambon is probably best known for his post-2000 work, such as voicing Uncle Pastuzo in the Paddington films and the villainous Bean in Fantastic Mr. Fox. After the late Richard Harris died in 2002, Gambon was picked to play the part of Hogwarts headmaster Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter series, guiding and assisting the boy who lived over the course of six films. On September 28, 2023, Gambon's family announced that the actor had died after contracting pneumonia. Gambon was 82 years old.